Hello and welcome back to the channel. Get ready for part two of a place that I have been to before. I'm not going to say where it is, but I will show you what it is. Yep, today's video we are exploring Glastonbury once again, and today we'll be going into the Abbey and possibly the Charleswell Gardens, as it is a May Day celebration going on as well. So let's just get into it. It has been suggested on the current site of the Glastonbury Abbey, it had religious importance to the pre Celtic period. The current form of the abbey was established in 712 and it was founded by King Ain of Wessex. The abbey was under Saxon control which saw some of its current form being built. In 1066, the wealthy abbey was seen as a prize by William the Conqueror who wanted to take control of it. Oh, me is risen. Up from down below, above ground, he is Bela, Lord of life and death, Bell, God of the ancients, by voice of fire, Seth, the words of welcome for the... Right, I'm in Glastonbury, as you can see, there is the bell time celebration, but I'm going into the Abbey, so let's have a look what's here now, it's quite nice by this, so let's have a look. Here we are here in Rastonbury Abbey, so let's have a look at this mini chapel. This is probably still in use because it's still got the pews here. But look at the medieval painting there. But yeah, it just felt a bit funky because how old the building is, but that's a box by here. This is the West Wall. This is St. Patrick's Chapel of Information. You like candles where you can light your candles. For a pretty full offer offering if you are a religious type. But we are gonna leave the abbey and go through that little arch and into the main bit now. We are going up to Sun Empire, which is the Glastonbury Thorn, the original thorn that was on Weirrell Hill. See, they had to move it because people were surprisingly and quite shockingly damaging it. Which, this is like part of Glastonbury's heritage, this tree. I don't know how crazy it sounds being a tree, but if you understand the mythology of this place, it does hold a lot of significance. But, this is the original holy thorn of Weirrell Tree. And now we're going to move down here to our first place we're going to visit, which is the Ladies' Chapel. Other than just doing the Abbey, I'm going to show you the Green Man procession for the Beltine, to show you what this Beltine celebration actually is about. It's about the start of summer in the old pagan traditions, and then I might take a wander up towards Charleswell Gardens and have a look at that as well. Here we are, coming up to the west wall of the nave of the Ladies' Chapel. I'll get a bit closer up now. So we're gonna have a look up from atop of the nave because you can as like a little bit of a viewing part that I've done before we go into it. I thought entering into this would be the best way. So it is quite busy. So we can have a look. Look at that. I'm going to go down to it now. To show you before we go down to it is a um, site of St. Dunstan's Chapel. It looks very small, but this is on the east side of the Ladies' Chapel. But we continue now to go into the actual Ladies' Chapel proper and down. Yeah, here's the galley and the crypt. As you can see but there is the name. Zoom in, we will go down to it, I promise you. This is it from the catwalk. It's the pews, the way. And 
here is the crypt underneath the ladies chapel but you can use this catwalk to actually actually go down it as you can see right by here in this little patch right next to Lady Chapel is where they reckon that the graves of King Arthur were where he was dug and he's been reburied over into that part of the abbey so we'll go, come back but we're gonna go over to the abbey kitchen now but while we walk over there let's have a look at the mythology of Glastonbury Abbey Mythology surrounds Glastonbury Abbey ranging from Jesus Christ to King Arthur. Located in the Abbey is what is believed to be King Arthur's tomb. The story goes that a pilgrim visited the Abbey and was digging up in the cemetery and discovered the tomb of King Arthur and Queen Guinevere. The two skeletons were discovered in a hollowed out oak trunk. Mythology also states that the Abbey may have been founded by Joseph of Amarithia, with Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene has been visitors to, with the Holy Grail believed to be in the Abbey. Alright, I'm walking over now to the um, Abbey's kitchen, but this is in behind scaffolding behind me is the Abbot Hall, which is going to be maintained and you can hear the bell time celebration behind me. The information sent is behind our wall, but this is going to be maintained and reopened for people to see. But we're going into there now, which is the Abbey kitchen. So let's have a look. And this is inside the Abbot's kitchen. This is obviously where the stove would have been, where the pots and pans would have boiled all this stuff. And the eating area for the Abbot's where we would have prepped food and ate at you. But if you go by here, there are actually medieval um, recipes like mixed pickle, posset, parsnip pie and tarts of flesh. We're going to have a look around by here to what looks like the, the prepping area where they would have prepped the meats. It's got a barrel probably where they stored their wine. And they got a meat stove, which they would have obviously cooked the chicken, the pig, and other animals. Hello there. They've got their pots and pans, their crockery, for having a fire where they would have warmed up, and the veg prep area. So, this is where they would have lived before the pages of monarchies by Henry VIII, monarchy's monasteries. So let's continue and go back towards the main part of the abbey. So I'm going to head back towards the um, ladies' chapel because there were people down there. I didn't really want to film in front of them because they do get into the video and it is, feels like you're just invading their privacy. But let's have a look what the nave is like there. And then we head over to the main chapel where the tomb of King Arthur is, and then see where else is left here, then possibly have a look at the rest of the bell time celebration. Right, here we go down to the crypt and the nave of this chapel. This is the one of the most maintained part. See, this is the crypt part by over where this walkway is, but we're going to walk down towards the nave where the sermons would have been held, the ceremonies that happened here. Very grand this chapel is. So let's have a sit down there. And just appreciate it I would say. Because there is something to see what we'll explore the need now. And by here is a St. Joseph's well. This part of the chapel, I think this is quite a weird looking well because it's like carved into the wall. 
But we leave here now and go back to the main part of the abbey. Just the main chapel of what's left of it and King Arthur's tomb, so I'll see you there. Now I'm taking you to the main part of the abbey before going down to the Colster. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm sorry if I am pronouncing it incorrectly. And let's just have a look at King Arthur's tomb and where else is here at the abbey. This would be the main part of the chapel. Or the abbey, as you can see, has got the grandiose style buildings. So we're going to move towards them because in that building there is where the tomb of King Arthur is. This wall has got significance and we'll find out where it is. It's the nave of the great church, the original nine bays, only three bays of the south aisle and part way, part of the west doorway and the to the colster remains. So we are going to move now towards the entrance into the main part of the abbey. Here we go. Welcome to the southeast pier of the crossing of the western pier's only stone foundations. You can see how spectacular this place really was probably before the damage and the dissolution of monasteries. I'm going to cut down onto this bit right here. There is something you would like to see. I'll zoom into it. This is the site of King Arthur's tomb in the years in the year 90, 1191. The bodies of King Arthur and his queen were said to be found on the south side of the Ladies Chapel. On the 19th of April 1278, the remains were removed in the presence of King Edward I and Queen Eleanor to the to a black marble tomb on the site of this tomb survived until the dissolution of the abbey in 1539 which we'll get on to the dissolution very shortly but buried in this little cotton off bit is the grave of King Arthur of Avalon so we move forward and we move on over up towards where the high altar would be and you can imagine you can see where it's still left the depression land is probably still a bit underneath the this grass you can see the foundation still there this is where the most spectacular part of this abbey would be is by here and it is something to see and honestly I think we are coming up to the nave by here or was another chapel actually, if I'm correct. It says the chapel of St. Andrew, so we'll go into that and have a look right now. Here we are now into the chapel of St. Andrew. Specifically another part. So this is not a lot left. It has got a part of the app trail marker where you can download the Glastonbury app and you can actually follow the trail. And this really nice memorial bench. But just, just look at that. You're just staring down the different types of the abbey and just seeing what happened to us. It's depressing, it is. Because some buildings like this should, should never be destroyed, regardless of religious and religion and politics and how much I can take over. And both of them combined are dangerous. I'm heading down to the Colster. Um, I think after this, I'm going to end this part of the video in the abbey and go towards now back into the Beltine celebration and then possibly at the Charleswell Garden so while we're here I think it's a good time to know what was the dissolution of these monasteries and why Henry VIII did it and then I'll see you at the Colster Was Henry VIII establishing Protestantism as England's main religion and the Catholic monasteries was dissolved Glastonbury Abbey was reviewed to have a large amount of silver and gold as well as the attached land. In September 1539 the Abbey was visited by Richard Lainton, Richard Pollard and Thomas Moyle and announced on the orders of Thomas Cromwell. The Abbey was stripped of its wealth and the Abbot Richard Whiting was made as a traitor. He was taken to Glastonbury Tor where he was hanged, drawn and quartered in November 
1539. This is where the location of the old bell tower was given for the abbey by Adam, Abbot Adam of Sodbury. But this is where the former coaster is. So let's have a little walk down now towards it. And very few of this remains because this is probably other than the ones that's just foundations into the ground. This is just literally what it is, it's just stonework that remains just about above its foundations. If you are a fan of my videos and you watch this quite regularly, this has got a bit of the barracks in Caleon on towards this, still one of the benches remain. But this is a quite big area. They got damaged and destroyed. We'll go down into this part by over. We're just gonna have a quick look. But if you understand, like the Kaleon one, where it's just just about the foundations of the um, barracks showing, and the toilet is somehow well maintained. But got some pillars, which possibly could have been these great grand pillars, which probably had artwork on it. But let's have a look where this sign says before we carry on down to our lower part. This is the undercroft beneath the dormitory. So this would be the underground part of the place. The weather's changed and it's really nice and sunny and it's starting to warm up. And I've, when, I, when I came in here about 20 minutes ago, it was really cloudy. You can hear the celebration still going on. But I really want to explore where this little bit is by here. Because it's lower than the rest of the abbey. So let's have a look, just down here. So here we go, down the step and ramp. Some narrow steps for the way down here. There's natural water that flows into here, so it must have a great use. The sea has got the pillars again foundation, so you can see where the pillars are actually linked to, to be the ceiling support. It looks like this could be in another chapel because I got a feeling this could be in the nave then it would be pews across this pillar but we're going to discover that now by, by finding this out on the sign. So this is the undercroft beneath the, re the, re the, re the, re the refectory and the dining hall. This would have been way above or possibly where people ate in this abbey. I think that's it for the exploration of the abbey and let's see what else Beltine Glastonbury can offer us. Now I've left the abbey so let's head back into where the information centre is next door and have a look at some of these Beltine celebrations. It sounds a bit fun it does listen to these old bards and whatever else they can offer because like, this is all new to me as well as you if you don't know what it is just have an explore of it all right now who know <laughs> we await for the Avalonian free state why why free state i hear you ask why free state i hear you ask why free state I hear you ask. Why? God, Mary's sanctuary on earth. It is here, ladies and gentlemen. Mary's sanctuary on earth. Just think about that. Paradise regained in the now and the here. But this is the party in the end of the world as into the whirlpool we fix as a hurled as the broken helix is retuned and retooled. No more spice when bliss comes from within, no more need for ruin and sin. The promised land is there to win for those who drain the ever filling grail, the blood of the martyrs. 
I'll meet you outside here in five minutes then. I've got to do a little bit to get these in place. If you didn't notice from the last video, and if this is the first time you're watching Glastonbury, this place is unique in its way and it's a really good thing. You don't see places like this in Britain anymore, especially in England. So a man who is the Merlin of the area just play a flute and have a laugh. We are coming up towards the Green Man in about 40, 40 minutes, 20 minutes. So we'll wait by a but we've got the trial as well, I think, as well. And probably end off have a pint in the Georgia Pilgrim. That's why not. Let's go to one of the oldest pubs in Britain. Another part, part three will be coming soon. Let's end this video with a pint of the Georgia Pilgrim. Let's go. end of it today so if you did enjoy the video guys give it a like give it a thumbs up share it and whatsoever let's have a look at this quickly thumbs up and needs and then I'll see you next time for part three last week and other videos. Thank you.